Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Retro Tech. Today in the Retro Vintage Spotlight, we have a classic Hewlett Packard E2378A multimeter folio vintage pleasure. Oh, I love this one. In terms of a timeline, we're probably looking at around 1989, 1990-ish. That is when this model was released. So lo and behold, in front of us, we have our E2378A, three and a half digit, 3200 count, two times per second sampling multimeter. Now, as we all know, Hewlett Packard made some great instruments back in the day. Eventually they were bought out by Agilent. But uh, boy, these are definitely This is the classics. original box that this multimeter shipped in as well. Wow, check it out. And on the side, you can see E2378A is the one that it shipped with. Um, I have another meter as well that was given to me from a viewer. I did a repair on that. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It was the E2373A. You can see, a lot of made in Japan. Work. Yes, this multimeter was made back in the day. Another bonus with this is the fact that we actually have the user manual. Check it out. E2377A and E2378A operators, operators manual as they called it back in the day. Look at that nice big bold picture schematics telling us we have that liquid crystal display pointing out the different parts of the multimeter. Uh, really nice. And look at that calibration and performance testing. Yes. They wanted you to calibrate that meter. They wanted you to make sure things were precise. And they're telling you exactly how to do it. Something you just do not see in today's multimeter also, round. I found the warranty card that came with this and it's dated March, 1989. So uh, it gives us a good ballpark figure. Now compared to the 237A, uh, the 2378A was definitely a bigger beast, you can tell. Besides the obvious color difference, it was physically a larger meter. Uh, a little bit thicker and just overall much heavier. Uh, this was still a really gorgeous meter as well, um, but uh, a little more oomph with the 378. At the top of the meter, we have our power button. This one is a push button. Beside that, we have a data hold, and this is one of two data holds. I'll explain that in a minute. Beside that, we have our current inputs for the uh, AC as well as the DC. And finally, we have our continuity and diode. Beside that, we have a range switch. And at the bottom, we have our inputs. On the far left, we have the current. In the middle, we have the common. And on the far right, we have our positive term terminal for the voltage, resistance, continuity, and diode. Now, when you turn the multimeter on, it does a power up self test. So, when the multimeter is turned on, all display segments appear for approximately two seconds during the self test. Afterwards, the multimeter beeps once and you can start taking measurements. We've got 4.9 yeah. volts coming up. 5.00 is what we want to see. So, pretty darn close. And as well, you can see we do have a decent looking bar graph. Now, that bar graph is 33 segments. Uh, sampling speed is 12 times per second. So, not too shabby considering it's 1989. Now, as I said, this has two data holds, the one here at the top and believe it or not, one on the side. Yeah, that's right. For whatever reason, HP decided it'd be good to have two of them. So look at that, a data hold on the side of the multimeter. Definitely don't see that every day. Nice big display, um, fairly clear, fairly crisp. Hey, you got to give it some breaks. We're talking uh, 30 plus years at least going on here. You can see it also does support temperature. Um, and this is done via a uh, K-type thermocouple. Um, it didn't come with one, but any K-type adapter uh, works uh, these days. Plug and play and away you go. So you might say, how good is this in terms of diode testing? Well, you know, it's a really good question. I've not tested diode in a long time with this unit. So let's find out. Wow, 0.542 forward voltage drop. Try that red LED. There we go. The yellow, the green, blue, and white. So they're all lit up two to, three, two to five rather in terms of a forward voltage drop. But uh, once again, hey, good job. Hanger is rather unique as well. So it, it's a tilt stand and it doubles as well as a hanger. Um, basically, you give it a squeeze, pop it out of these holes, put it into those holes, and it actually will line up completely vertical so you can hang this baby anywhere you go. Cool. Now, I'm telling you, look at that. Look at those screws in this multimeter backing. I mean, wow. Beautiful. This thing weighs a ton. I wish I could just somehow demonstrate how heavy it is, but it is super heavy. And look at that. Made in Japan. Oh, 
gorgeous. Just gotta love old meters. Okay, let's take it apart, take a look on the inside, see what's going on. Once again, four screws, and look at that, four washers as well with each of those screws. And let's see if it's gonna come out without any problems. Oh yes, oh my goodness. Oh, beautiful, wow. Wow, the screw's all falling apart, that's okay. Okay, let's put it down. Yes, it is still turned on, I know, I know. Okay, let's take a closer look. So let's just start off at the bottom and do a slow pan upwards and see how they built a multimeter 35 plus years ago. Oh nice yes. Kick our current shunt here and it is, um, label is R27, I believe, on the PCB. Look at those input jacks. Oh my God, those are, I mean, those are lifetime. Those will outlive not only you and me, but oh, wow. Like it's, it's incredible. The attention to detail back then was well, there's a fuse cover on. Once again, another great attention to detail here. Um, let's just tie and take it out. Yeah, comes right off like so. And there is our 15 amp, 250 volt fuse ceramic. I've repaired a few of the 237-8A uh, multimeters, and one of the common themes I see in terms of the repair is eventually uh, you have a nasty corrosive leak from the battery housing compartment. So uh, if you have one of these gorgeous old vintage meters and you don't take out the batteries, chances are you're gonna have an issue down the road, and that's what happens with a lot of these. Thank heavens this one hasn't experienced such trauma, but it is oh so common. And the problem with these is that there is some very sensitive uh, surface mount components that get messed up and uh, it just causes havoc. So yeah, if you have a vintage meter, take out those batteries, unless you're not using it. If you're I removed the other protective cover over here. This is the 500 milliamp, 250 volt uh, fast blow fuse for uh, the low current side. So here you see a bunch of uh, potentiometers. These are all uh, adjustments for the self calibration. Basically RV1 through to RV5, and it tells you right here in the manual as well. Um, so you make those five adjustments, and if all is good, you'll have a perfectly calibrated 237.8A. The back meter as well, look at that. Yes, we have shielding. Oh, they know how to do it back in the day. A little bit of shielding over here, but just enough to keep things nice and clean. And we have a fuse holder as well. Always great to see that when it's tied into the assembly. There is part of the rotary selector switch uh, dial in there, nice and tight. I'm telling you, these things are just like little miniature tanks. There's the display. Look at those, look at those brass threaded inserts. Four of them, four of them. Man, HP was not messing around. Love it. So if you notice at the top here is the speaker or buzzer. It's one of those thin little piezo style uh, right in the back of the meter. So that's why it's not the loudest continuity in the world. Um, but uh, yeah, at least at least it has some sound. Just and of the course same. the main rotary selector switch right here. Wow, that is one beast of a selector. And finally at the top, we have another place for a, a fuse. This is for the smaller milliamp fuse over here. So milliamp at the top and the high current fuse on the back side of the plating. Interesting. Okay, let's put it back together. Come back with my final thoughts. So somebody was gonna ask me, Darren, what is one of your favorite vintage multimeters? Uh, without a doubt, the E2378A from Hewlett Packard is definitely one of them. Like I said, I use this multimeter uh, still to this day and I absolutely love it. Hey, if you can pick up one of these multimeters for a good price and it is in good shape, by all means, don't be shy. These are great, great instruments. They're still just as good today as they were back in the day. And I'm telling you, they're also a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed this installment of Retro Tech. Now back to regular programming.